You play to win the game. Hello? You play to win the game. You don't play to just play it. That's the great thing about sports. You play to win. And I don't care if you don't have any wins. You go play to win. When you start telling me it doesn't matter, then retire. Get out. Because it matters. Well, good afternoon, friends. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I'm down here in my man cave taking a break from doing some work in the workshop. Quite frankly, actually just waiting for it to heat up some. I've got some, It's cold out in the garage right there, and it's actually cold outside, so I've got the heat on there warming it up, and then I'm going to go back out and do some more work. But I want to go through here. I want you to understand something about me. Um, I, I know some of you are probably sick to death about Bobby Wagner and me continually talking about this. I understand the Dallas Cowboys, chances are they will not sign them. But that does not mean that we shouldn't look and just go ahead and just toe the company line and believe that every move that they make is the perfect move. Because ultimately, what you need is you need different perspectives on things that go right and things that go wrong. Stephen Jones has his opinion, and if he just listens to people that just agree with him, he will never grow. And maybe, just maybe, people will start looking back and saying, you know, those guys over there, they had something. They were on to something. Let's dig a little deeper and see what they have, just to start thinking outside of the box. And, in fact, I just love to make arguments. I was never on a debate team or anything like that. Quite frankly, I couldn't speak in public. Believe it or not, I used to be too shy to actually speak, period, um, which is crazy. But here's what I want you guys to understand here. Um, we've had some interesting stuff going on. I still believe there is something more to this picture than what's been led on as far as Bobby Wagner goes. Bobby Wagner is a great player. As I look and I see average players that are getting paid big money and everything else, something is amiss here. I understand he's 32 years of age, but I want you to understand this is not just your typical 32-year-old player. This is not um, Don Terry Poe that we're talking about, a guy who's been injured you know, the last couple of years that'll come to training camp you know, on the pup list, a guy who you know, he was an okay player but never was a great one. We're talking about one of the greats in the NFL that has yet to have signs of slowing down. Now, here's what I want you to go through here because we do know that Sean McVay and the Rams had him come in there. They don't per se have to have him, but it would be a nice piece to add to the kitty because, quite frankly, for the Rams, if you add Bobby Wagner, that's like adding a draft piece because you don't have any draft picks till the fifth round. So the Rams are exactly the team that they have now and only have about $8 million of money to spend on the cap. And if you're talking about a one-year deal, it's got to be a hard number because it's a one-year deal. So $11 million doesn't fit unless they restructure other players. They are, you know, hot to the hilt right now and don't have money, but they want to bring them in. And they're hoping that, hey, we're a Super Bowl winning team here. You know, we can give you that shot. You can be the centerpiece on that defense along with Aaron Donald. And that's what they're offering. Then you've got, of course, Baltimore who sees that we know the Rams are against it, although they're not in much better shape either. They only have about a million dollar more than the Rams do. I think the Rams have $7 million. I think uh, Baltimore has $8 million. If they were actually able to have a longer contract, you could spread that out. But because we're hearing that Bobby Wagner is looking for $11 million for a one-year deal, you kind of look at that and say, well, wait a minute. <laughs> you know, that's going to be harder to work in the equation. If you had a two- or three-year deal, you could kick the money down the road like we've seen with so many different contracts. Be that as it may, the Cowboys are sitting here currently with about $15 million and another ten that's coming come June 1st because of Lyle Collins. They, they have the room that they could do it. And my question to everybody who says, you know, forget it, it's not worthwhile, I want you to understand this is going to be my final argument here. Okay, I have gone through and made arguments about players before that would have honestly made us better. I, I, Calais Campbell, 
when he was leaving the Cardinals. I said, that's the kind of guy the Cowboys need from a leadership standpoint, from an ability, from a health standpoint, that he would have been a game changer. And I still believe you need a Calais Campbell type on the defensive line. I have gone through with the DeMario Davises that literally before we drafted Van Der Esch and, and we're still dealing with Jalen Smith, that I said that this guy, this linebacker, who has not missed a game in that whole time, that that would have been your real value pickup there because the guy's a leader, the guy's a stud, the guy has 100-plus tackles every year and five or six sacks. That that's a game changing leader. And I was pounding the table for guys like that. And I always find a guy that I swear in my mind, I believe could be a game changer. And see, Bobby Wagner is not just a regular player. I, I, let's just think about this. This is where it's crazy. If you are pissed off that we did not keep Randy Gregory, If you are actually saying, damn, Randy Gregory, that that the brother screwed us, that you believe that we had to have Randy Gregory, who, mind you, was looking at a $14 million a year salary. That's what the Cowboys were looking at, $14 million a year for Randy Gregory. Okay? If you were okay with that, then you should be ecstatic with the idea of paying Bobby Wagner $11 million. If you take, I want you, I'm going to give you something that's going to blow your mind. If you take every tackle that Randy Gregory has had in his career, which is 85, double that, double that. That's what Bobby Wagner had last season. Now, don't get me wrong. Randy Gregory is not a linebacker. You're going to have more tackles as a linebacker than you will as a defensive end. But I'm just trying to put this in perspective, how big a season that was. If you take Micah Parsons' total tackles from last year and double it, add another five to it, that's what Bobby Wagner did last year as a middle linebacker. And here's where I'm going to go ahead and say that you have the opportunity to get one of the best linebackers in football at $11 million. Let's do a comparison here. I, I, because see, I don't think you guys have the gravity, and, and especially Stephen Jones. This message is for Stephen Jones. Wake the F up. Do I need to go ahead and, and, and do a Will Smith on you to wake you up or something? Because I want you to look at these numbers. These are mind-blowing, okay? Again, Bobby Wagner is 32 years old. Randy Gregory, who you're willing to spend $14 million a year for, will be 30 years old next year. He will be 30 years old next year. Only two years younger than Bobby Wagner. So let me show you right here, right above me. I'm sorry, over here. Demario Davis. Believe me, I wanted Demario here. I would love to have Demario here. And I had said, going into this offseason, I said, one of these two great players will be a cap casualty. I said, Bobby Wagner or Demario Davis. And I said, you got to get one of these guys. All right. Demario Davis. Truly the heart and the soul of the New Orleans defense. Dude, I absolutely positively love like he's one of my kids. Last year, I want you to look at the numbers. 70 solo tackles, 35 assists, 10 quarterback hits, 13 tackles for a loss, 13 sacks. Now, he is used more as a pressure guy where he's going to be playing downhill and getting people. You see those numbers? Now look at it with Bobby Wagner. Bobby Wagner had more tackles, more solo tackles by 23. Doubled and then some the assist. Didn't have as many quarterback hits. Didn't have as many sacks, but had the forced fumble. Okay. Let's go on. Levante David from Tampa Bay. Take a look at the numbers. 
Take a look. Levante David's last season, 63 tackles to 93. Assist, 34 to 77. Quarterback hits, 4 to 3. Sacks, 2 to 1. Forced fumbles, 2 to 1. And Levante David missed five games. Okay. Back to Randy Gregory. Now, again, this is not an apples-to-apples apples comparison because we're talking about defensive end, outside linebacker versus a middle linebacker. But like I pointed out, Bobby Wagner had twice as many tackles last year than Randy Gregory has had in his full career. And look at that. Quarterback hits, Randy Gregory, of course, as an outside rusher, 17. Um Sacks, of course, more being an outside rusher, an edge rusher. He's going to have more. But just trying to give you the gravity. And, by the way, to throw in for good measure, Randy Gregory ended up with playoffs having 10 penalties against him last year. At the worst times, like that tackling of the offensive lineman, on third down when we could have gotten the ball back with a lot of time left to try and take the lead. Do you know how many penalties Bobby Wagner had last year? Do you? Do you, punk? One penalty. One penalty all season long. Let's go on down. Leighton Van Der Esch, Leighton Van Der Esch. Just to give you an idea, just, just, just to give you a taste, you know, where we have a value return in Leighton Van Der Esch. And I'm not saying Leighton Van Der Esch is bad. Leighton Van Der Esch, I still believe, is still worried about that neck and doesn't sell out. Leighton Van Der Esch was better his rookie year. And maybe I should have looked at his rookie year on here. Uh, I don't know if I could compare it just that one year. But, but be that as it may, take a look. And what you got, Bobby Wagner versus Leighton Van Der Esch. Solo tackles, Bobby Wagner, almost double. Assist, more than double, two and a half times. Quarterback hits, Bobby Wagner, three times as many. Tackles for loss about even, and sacks even. Shall I go on? Dante Hightower. Now, if you've got a better linebacker, I don't know who else you're going to have. Dante Hightower. And I'm sure a lot of you say, oh, man, let's go get Dante Hightower. One less game for Dante Hightower. 39 solo tackles to 93. Assist. Bobby Wagner has three times as many assists. Tackles uh, for loss, three times as many. Quarterback hits about the same. Force fumbles, none for Dante Hightower, and, oh, I forgot, Bobby Wagner had an interception, too. So, as we go through here, Stephen Jones, here's my final take here right now. For those that keep telling me that he's 32 years old, man, I wouldn't pay him that much. You know, because literally, one of my best buddies out there says, you know what? I'd offer him about $5 million and, and say $6 million with incentives. We'll just do a whole bunch. And I'm like, so you're thinking $14 million for Randy Gregory, who only played in 12 games last year and had 10 penalties, who has in his whole career 16 sacks. You're okay with the 14, but Bobby Wagner, no, we can't take a chance with that. But take a look up here. As you look up Bobby Wagner, top 100, 2018. 21, 2019, 15, 2020, 13, 2021, he dropped a whole lot, 25. I don't know, Stephen Jones, how when you look at this, how you can look at this and say, I can take a chance on Randy Gregory, but I can't take a chance on Bobby Wagner. Doesn't hold water. I'm sorry. It doesn't hold water. 
And that is my argument here on why we should be looking at Bobby Wagner, that we should not be walking. We need to be running and trying to get Bobby Wagner. It should be a no-brainer. So, that being said, I got to get back up to the workshop and get to work because I got to pay the bills because I'm not on the Dallas Cowboys payroll. I don't often watch Eagle channels, but when I do, I watch Philly 500 so I can buy second round are you kidding me I, I oh, what do you just trade Carson then are you kidding me you just took over a quarterback in the second round this team is so good that they don't need to take I, I, they don't need anything else right they're so good they don't this has to be for something stay thirsty my friends and follow the Joker Sports